Welcome to this demonstration of how to make better code samples for your programming talks. It follows on very well from Jens's talk about the importance of drawing people's attention to the right parts of your slide. A quick summary of the basics that have been talked about very well in the earlier talks today. A particular thing I do want to point out, though, is the importance of being able to export your slides as PDFs. We've already had a request from Jens to submit our slides from today's talk. So if you can do your highlighting in a way that fits well with saving as a PDF for people to read offline, then that's a bonus. I'm going to be focusing today on showing you a few techniques in PowerPoint to help with, I'm talking about highlighting details in code, but it doesn't have to be, it can be animating and drawing attention to different parts of images that you've got on the screen. Um, just so, but just for context, let's talk about showing code. So I believe that it's important to check that your code compiles before you paste it in. So I have here some code that I checked before that it compiles. And it'd be really nice if we could just copy it from our favorite IDE and paste it into. Uh, OK, so I'm going to switch to editing at this point now. So we're going to try the first method. We're going to paste our code in. Yeah, but we've lost all of the highlighting. That's really annoying. Well. Never fear, if I undo that, PowerPoint has paste in and keep the source formatting. Well, that's not too bad. We've got the color coding, which is important for people to be able to quickly glance at your code and see context. But I want the, the um, fixed space fonts as well. Well, there's this weird trick, one weird trick that if you first paste your code into Microsoft Word. Now, if you're using different editors, you can experiment and try similar sorts of tricks. I think that if I show hidden characters, why this might work is because of the different kind of line endings. But anyway, let's select that. You may you, you experiment, you may want to not get that last end of line. And so now I'm gonna paste it in, but I want to show you that I've actually customized uh, using this um customized quick access toolbar so that one i think is paste and keep source formatting that's what happens if you get the line break wrong it's not consistent i don't understand why but so i'm using shift and left arrow so now i'm not getting that last character this is fiddly but once you get used to it you'll get into a stride and get into a pattern and it will be quite quick and i definitely recommend when you find your workflow write it down and save the notes. So let's try that. Hooray. OK, now we've got to get rid of this annoying bullet point. And <clears throat> maybe I could, uh, with more time, uh, if I was going to keep on using this style, I might create a new layout so I can easily create a new slide that's ready to paste in. Right, so now we've done some of the first bits that Jens recommended. And yeah, it looks like code. But I want to be able to tell people about the particular areas of interest. And one easy way to do that is because we've pasted it in this text, getting good quality images, and we can just do the highlighting. And I won't, I won't select more um, examples here, but you get the idea. So that works. And that's, this is actually how I did my first, very first C++ talk, did the highlighting for it. And then I used a laser pointer um, to point at the different highlights and I failed there. So it doesn't work having multiple highlights on one slide. So the next logical thing to do is to say, all right, well, I'll create three copies of the code. I've done this in the interest of time saving. So if you look at this number at the bottom, I'm on slide five and then slide six and then slide seven. I did that for a while and it worked quite well, but you can't rely on your slide numbers to judge your progress through the talk. You can't say I'm halfway through the time, I'm halfway through the page, the slides, because it's probably not proportional. And, and I've also fallen for the fact that if you discover a typo, 
in a comment or a string or something in a slide that's got six highlights, you've got to go and fix it six times and you're bound to miss one. So that's kind of annoying. So that's kind of like level two. It's nice for the audience, but we can do better. So I'm going to focus on what I ended up using and settling on. Just, it's a bit fiddly to explain, but at the end, I'm going to show you how you don't have to memorize the steps. You only have to do this once and then you can recycle. So I, I, need, I want to get the details recorded in a talk. And actually, when I started doing this in 2019, I did write down the notes and I had to go and find them in order to write this talk. I couldn't remember the details. So I'm happy that there's going to be a video of this. So, right, I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to insert a shape. You could do a rectangle, but I quite like the rounded corners. It's just a bit easier on the eyes. So I'll start by drawing my first highlight. And of course, it's solid. So that's no use to anybody. I would be if I'm not doing a demo, I'd be using all the keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to say shape options and fill the shape and let's make it a pale-ish yellow. And I'm going to make it uh, semi-opaque, partly because I want to be able to see the text underneath and whilst I'm building up the animations and partly because it ends up just looking better. So that's not too bad, but I really like having a slightly different colored border around the end. So maybe I might choose a darker yellow. <laughs> it's doesn't it's not critical for this, but you want it to be consistent. So choose something you like. Now I've created that. I don't want to be having to repeat those steps. So I will experiment with different keyboard shortcuts and find that on a Mac in PowerPoint, if I hold down the control key and click and drag something, I get a copy of it. So that's good. If I hold down the shift key, it keeps the and move it vertically. It keeps the left alignment. And let's oops, undo another copy. So obviously, I'm not going to waste your time perfecting the alignment, but just to give you the sort of idea. So now I've got the bits that I want to highlight. And uh, as an aside, I think it's worth saying this might seem like quite a lot of work, but once you've got it set up, it actually turns out to be a brilliant reminder of things that you intend to talk about, because you don't have to remember which of the three lines or the four lines I want to talk about. You go through your highlights and you say very calmly, very confidently, explain the line. So it's kind of like your auto cue. Um, and I found that really useful if I pick up an, a talk and repeat it sometime later. Obviously, if we start the slide there, that is not interesting. So the animations are our friend and in particular the animation pane. So what we're going to do is select one rectangle at a time. And this is slow because it's doing some kind of preview and I'm sure there's a way to turn that off. But anyway, so there we go. So we've got four things appearing. So we're going to be spending a lot of time testing what this looks like. OK, the first thing is I actually really want that first highlight to be shown as soon as I go into this slide. So instead of making this one appear, I'm going to make it disappear. So I start and then I click. Oh, that did not work. Ah, I've done this so many times before. I selected it via the object here and then said disappear. And you see how we've got another animation. So let's delete that. And what I actually want to do is select the animation there and change it to disappear. This is why you want to be able to visualize the animation steps. This pane on the right is really important. So now let's test it. Great, hooray. Huh, but there's a horrible gap. What can we do about that? Well, if I click on one of these and expand, I never memorize the order of these things. They're really non-obvious, I think. But this second one, we don't want it to be on the next click. We want it to appear, to appear with the previous one. And so now, rather than one, two, three, four, we've got one, one, two, three. So let's see what this looks like. First one is visible. Next click. OK, hooray, we've got that right. But we carry on 
Oh, I want to get rid of that using namespace thing. OK, so the trick for that is to select all of the middle rectangles. So not the first and not the last. And I'm going to say after animation, hide on next click. And I'm very intentionally not doing that on the last one. And I'll show you why. So let's start the slideshow again. Yes. Yep. 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 Now, the reason I'm not hiding the last one on click is because at this point, I just want to go on to the next slide. So that is the mildly tedious, but really quite effective way in PowerPoint of achieving a series of animations like this. Now, Hendrik mentioned Obsidian in an earlier talk. And actually, my last technical talk I did, I used Obsidian to generate the slides. And it's advanced slides um, plugin. Uh, you can just paste the code in. And with a little comment, you can say, I want to highlight lines one, then two to three, then five, then seven. And it just does it all for you. Um, so pick your tool and get to know how to use it. Now, there's one more thing I want to do, and then I'm done with this slide. And that is that the text is washed out because it's in front of my code. And I've done that deliberately because it's easy to select things and move them around. But once I'm happy with it, then I'll click on the border for the box that's got the code and say send all the way to back. Um, no, that's wrong. Send all the way to front. OK, and now we haven't got the wishy-washy. So that's it. If we had more time, I'd run through the steps a second time, but you'll be able to watch it on the video later. Now, a little bit of a tip. You really don't want to be doing all of that for every single slide. You're going to make mistakes, and it's really easy to get the animation steps wrong. So what I have at the end of my slide decks when I'm preparing them is a slide like this right at the end. And let's say that the most number of highlights I want is seven. I doubt I'd ever use that many. But here I've got the animation set up, and I've named all of the rectangles so I can see the order. So let's say I want to quickly highlight four things in this slide. I'll go back to here. I'll click outside of the slide. So I'm not risking dragging stuff. So I want four. So I'm going to select the first three and then command and click, or I think control and click on a PC. So I've got four things selected and copy those, go to the next slide, paste them in, and then start moving them around. I'm not going to align them up. It's not going to be worth your time, but just to demonstrate one, two, three, four, and on to the next slide. So all the time I'm looking for time saving ways so that I can, um, as Andre said, get the slides done and then focus on practicing. One last thing to mention in terms of tips. You can, in PowerPoint, customize the icons, the actions that are across the top of the screen. And there's a whole load of things like paste with source formatting and stuff like that that I don't use all the time. And they're buried in submenus or sub 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 menus or whatever. And if I find I'm using something quite a lot, then I'll click on this three dots and select customize quick access toolbar. And you have access to all of the commands in the program there. So they're grayed out from the screenshot, but this one here was paste with source formatting. And that is how you get to have better code samples in your programming talks. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Claire.